Welcome to Real Physics. Of course, Albert Einstein is part of this great physicist series, but given his celebrity status, you might think that you have heard already everything about him. However, history focuses on the outcome, his most famous achievements, and as I will try to convince you without good reason. In fact, he tried many things, most of which we have never heard of. So this is about the poorly illuminated yet very exciting part of his work. Nonetheless, let's start with something well known, special relativity he developed in 1905. There isn't that much to say about. Its predictions are excellently tested, such as time dilation and also E equals mc squared, the famous formula. Special relativity is simply the only consistent scheme that harmonizes Newtonian mechanics with the fact that matter cannot be accelerated beyond the speed of light. Which remains a remarkable thing that Einstein did not explain as such, but this is not a critique of special relativity. But soon after 1905 we move into uncharted territory. Einstein completed his work on general relativity in 1915. But these 10 years between special and general relativity were not a straight path of progress. In a flash of genius, he conceptualized the equivalence principle, which states that there is no physical distinction between a gravitational field, imagine a windowless dungeon on Earth, and an accelerated chamber in free space, imagine uh, being in a heavily boosted rocket. Now, Imagine a light ray passing through a window of this rocket and it turns out that this light ray must be curved and if these two situations are indeed indistinguishable then a light ray must also be curved in the gravitational field. And this was spectacularly confirmed in 1919 establishing the geometric version of general relativity of 1915. However, the great success overshadowed Einstein's attempt of 1907 and 1911, in which he simply explained the curvature by assuming a variable speed of light. That's what he said in 1911. The constancy of the speed of light can only apply to space-time regions with constant gravitational potential. Analogous to classical optics, nearby masses could influence the refractive index and cause light to follow the fastest path instead of the shortest. In fact, as it became clear much later, such a variable speed of light version of general relativity explains all the classical tests as well. And I believe it's even superior to the geometric form because it incorporates Mach's principle, something that Einstein always admired but never realized in his theory. Now, if you're interested in this variable speed of light theory, I wrote a book about the details, but if you're talking about the little known work of Einstein, there is much more. His big dream was to unify gravity with electromagnetism. And there is an intriguing attempt around 1930 when he collaborated with the French mathematician, Elie Cartan. In differential geometry, there is a concept similar to curvature, which is known as torsion. However, this torsion has more degrees of freedoms than curvature, and the idea was to express curvature equivalently by a part of the torsion tensor and use the rest to describe electrodynamics, which works astonishingly well because the equations are strikingly similar to those of Maxwell's. Now again, the details are elsewhere, but what struck me, and this is a little known fact, that this concept of torsion, discussed by Einstein and Cartan in the late 1920s, is the appropriate mathematical tool to describe defects in crystals whose motion, hold your breath, is described by the exact same equation as a relativistic electron. This is mind blowing, but as a bad joke of history, was discovered 20 years after Einstein's attempts were deemed a failure. 
Maybe this was because at the time Einstein was far off the scientific mainstream for another reason. Ironically, although he was the one who started the quantum revolution with his famous postulate of light quanta in 1905, he later became notorious for his critique of quantum mechanics, which is expressed in his maybe not so sound argument, God does not play dice, why not? Yet people should provide a reason for this occurrence of randomness after all. But a still more crucial point, and another thought experiment, is an argument raised by Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen in 1933. According to the common picture, there are systems in which two electron spins are always oriented in opposite directions, yet every single spin behaves randomly. In other words, even if they are at a distance, one spin would somehow instantly communicate its direction to the other, violating, of course, the speed limit of special relativity. This blatantly contradicts logic and it was Einstein who revealed this important inconsistency, prompting experimenters to test it with this stunning result. Yes, nature contradicts logic. Now, everybody seems to be happy with this, but I think this result compels us to reconsider some of our very basic assumptions of physical reasoning. That is, are the notions of space and time an appropriate stage to describe physical reality? This inspired me to write another book. However, I can only advise you to have also a look at Einstein's later work. To do justice to his entire work, one must know that it consists of a variety of creative attempts, not all of them in line with each other. So one must be careful when people use him as a crown witness for their fancy. For example, Einstein was not even firm on the question of gravitational waves, and it is certainly incorrect to say he believed in black holes. It is certainly far-fetched, if not misleading, to justify the questionable idea of dark energy with one of his papers, and I think it is annoying bogus when string theorists claim to work on his legacy when indulging in their multidimensional fantasies. I committed a little sin when referring to his work in 1911, but at least his papers provide a factual basis. So my recommendation is, if you're dealing with Einstein, look up the original articles. There is still plenty to discover. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.